In the last section, we got our application working, but you might notice a little red error message in the Chrome console, something about a WebSocket connection. So again, the issue here is that our browser and the running React app inside of it wants to get a active connection back to the development React server so that it gets a notification anytime that our source code changes, telling it that the browser needs to automatically reload. The problem is that we have not set up our Nginx server to successfully allow through WebSocket connections. And so in this section, we're going to make a little change to the configuration file of our Nginx server and solve that issue. So to get started, I'm going to open up my code editor. I'll find the nginx default.conf file. Inside of the server block, we're going to expose one routing layer or one route through the Nginx server that will allow a WebSocket connection to be made with the running React pro process. Now, if you look at the WebSocket request very carefully, you'll notice that it says WebSocket on a path of socket.js-node. So that's the route that we're going to look for and proxy it up to a backend. So I'll say location slash socket.js-node. We'll do a proxy pass to HTTP slash slash client semicolon. And then to specifically allow WebSocket connections, We'll add on a proxy HTTP version of 1.1, a proxy set header of upgrade, and then HTTP upgrade with a dollar sign in front of it. Don't miss the dollar sign. And then finally, proxy set header connection upgrade. Oops, let me get my spelling there. Upgrade, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna save this file. And now that we made a change to the Nginx server, we need to rebuild our Nginx container. So to do so, I'll flip back over to my terminal again, where I have my running Docker Compose process. I'm gonna hit Control C to stop all the running containers, and then I'll run Docker Compose up dash dash build again. Now this build should be very quick because we don't have to redo all those npm installs. And so almost instantly, we should see everything start to open back up. Now, again, if you see any error messages here, I highly recommend that you hit Control C and just restart everything with a Docker Compose up. Like I said, at this point, there's a couple of kind of dependency issues where sometimes the API is gonna load up a little bit too quickly and it's going to come online before Redis or Postgres are ready to receive connections. But when we eventually deploy this, we're going to put a little fix in that's gonna make sure that that will not be an issue in a production environment. So if I now start everything back up again, and then go back to my browser at localhost 3050, I'll refresh the page. It looks like I got the error message to go away, and now you should still be able to enter in, say, an index of seven, submit it, refresh, and see for index of seven, I calculated 21. Cool, so it looks like our application is doing pretty darn well. You might also notice that we've got the two somewhat hard to see links here, but they do exist. You can click on other page. This is now a distinctly different route, you'll notice. And if you refresh the page, it does successfully still load up the React application, which is exactly what we wanted. I can then click on home to go back to the home route, refresh again, and again, everything works as we would expect. So I think the application is in a great state. It definitely looks like it's working the way we would expect. So let's take a quick pause right here. We're gonna come back to the next section and start talking about deploying this off to Amazon Web Services. So I'll see you in just a moment.